So we see we're at the top of the hour, Nico. If you want to, do you want to give it one or two more minutes, perhaps? Or I'm I'm flexible whenever you want to get it started. Yeah, let's, let's give it two more minutes. Uh, I just talked to one of my wingmen here in the hallway, and he's about to join as well. So right, great, uh, great. We'll give Alex and David a minute to join. Sure. Outstanding. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We need to start in about two more minutes. This will be uh, live streamed and available on the Hyperledger YouTube channel. Um, live stream it right now it'll be available probably in an hour or so after the session ends great and do you want to just get your live your screen shared again nico just to make sure there's no issues yeah let me just double check that I'll share some slides here okay great yep i see that then perfect Looking good okay well, thanks everyone for your patience. I see people are dialing in. Maybe, maybe just one more minute or so. So I see we're two after Nico. I'm going to get the live stream going. If you want to wait another, another minute or so, that's certainly fine. But here, let me get it. Yeah, let's roll. Uh, so the Zoom is sometimes, the live stream is sometimes a little bit particular here. Sorry. Give me one more minute. Okay, you were live. Excellent. I'm just gonna grab the link for the guy that we'll be using. Oh, I'll send that out in just a minute, actually. All right, are we ready to kick off? You're good to go. All right, thank you everybody for attending today. I'm really excited about this workshop. Uh, looks like we have a, a good turnout and it looks like folks are still joining here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things kicked off. Uh, my name is Nico Geyer. I'm a, a software engineer here at Kaleido, and I'll be joined by Alex Schorcher and David as well. Uh, there are two other uh, engineers here at Kaleido and uh, also maintainers on Hyperledger Firefly. Uh, so Alex and David will be uh, helping out with the workshop today. There is a, a channel in Discord that you can join if you haven't already uh, for, for chat. This is going to be a, a very interactive, very hands-on workshop. We're going to go through things slowly, intentionally, so that people can follow along and do things on their machine as we go. Um, so just a couple of, you know, let me just share my whole screen here so I can um, share another window. Sorry about that. I'm just going to switch this real quick. Okay. Um, so just a, a couple of things. This is the, the guide that we will be going through for today's workshop. I'm going to just drop this in the chat so you have a link to it. Um, if you don't have Docker installed on your computer, we you will need that. You'll need Docker and Docker Compose. Um, so go ahead and get that set up. There's some, some notes and prerequisites in the uh, in the top of the guide here. So you can start looking through that. I, I do have a few slides that we'll go through kind of to, to kick this off. But uh, if you want, just want to glance at that real quick, just to make sure that you'll be set up for when we get to the hands-on part that uh, you can go ahead and do that. Um, the other thing is the, here's the, the channel that I mentioned. So if you join the Hyperledger Discord server, if you scroll down to the Firefly channel, there's a, uh, a, a Firefly workshop channel here in the Firefly section. This is the channel that we'll use for uh, dialogue during the workshop. So if you have questions uh, or if you get stuck on something or need help, 
uh, post it here and I'll try to monitor this, but uh, Alex and David will be monitoring it and answering questions in there as well. Okay, so uh, where do my, my slides go here? Cool, here we go. So uh, just real quick, wanna go through the goals of this workshop so you know what we'll get out of it. Uh, we're gonna learn how to set up Firefly and connect to a public chain. We are going to deploy and configure a custom token contract with Firefly. We're gonna start that contract from scratch actually, and I'm gonna walk you through all the different parts of that. We're gonna upload NFT assets to public IPFS with Firefly, and uh, we're gonna mint an NFT on a public chain and look at it on a public chain and um, We'll, we'll be able to, to see it there. So uh, one other thing, I actually, I, I think I, I maybe mentioned, forgot to mention this in um, in the guide. <laughs> it just now occurred to me. If you want to actually see your NFT in a real wallet app, um, I recommend the, I, I think I, I may have, I may have mentioned this in the, in the top of the guide here, but um, I, I recommend the Alpha Wallet app. Uh, you can get it here. Uh, this is something you can set up on your smartphone, uh, it's open source. So, um, you know, I, I like to recommend open source software. Uh, but this this app has a couple of features that we need for today. Uh, it allows you to connect to a test net, which we'll be using a test net for today, so that you don't have to spend real money in order to mint your NFT. Um, and it also shows the artwork of the NFT in there. So. Um, when we get to the point where we actually minted our token and we want to transfer it to an address, you can use your um, it, this is a kind of an optional step, but you can you can transfer it to your wallet address from this app, and then you can actually see it to show up there. And uh, so that's that's kind of like a cool bonus feature. If you want to go ahead and get that set up on your phone, if you don't have um, a wallet app already that can connect to a test net. So that's just one other thing that we can set up. All right, for the agenda, um, we're going through the housekeeping stuff right now. Uh, I'm going to give a very brief introduction to Hyperledger Firefly. I'm going to try to keep it to five to 10 minutes. And uh, just to kind of give, if folks are, are new to the project in general, just kind of give an overview of like, what, what is this thing? And, um, but I'm going to keep that brief because I, I really want to spend the bulk of the time hands on. Uh, the total workshop runtime is three hours. Uh, I can't sit still for three hours at a time. So <clears throat> I've, I've planned a couple of breaks in between uh, certain sections. So uh, we'll see how far we get. We'll, we'll kind of just, uh, we'll be flexible. So if we... Uh, you know, this this may not happen in exactly this order, um, but I want to give some people some breaks throughout because uh, you may need to go get something to drink or uh, or food, depending on what time zone you're in. <clears throat> but uh, we will plan on taking some breaks as we go. Uh, so here's just kind of a, a rough a rough outline of the the time and the order that we're going to do stuff in. Uh, if we have time at the end, we'd love to just kind of have an open Q and A time as well. So uh, that is the agenda, and uh, with that, I'm just going to check chat here. Um, thanks for, for posting all the, the helpful links in there. Appreciate that. So let's get into just a, a very brief introduction to what is Firefly. So Firefly is a platform to build Web3 apps. Um, so I, I like to describe this to developers. I, I like to use a, a stack diagram. And I think this, this picture gets at the, the immediate value to a developer and i'm a developer and I, I assume probably many of you are as well or or you're at least uh comfortable with code and that sort of thing so so hopefully this resonates with you as well um so what do you need to build a web3 app well first you need a blockchain um you need uh if, if you're gonna have public data available you probably need some sort of off-chain storage uh, like an ipfs node and uh, there's lots of great open source projects for these th types of things so um you know, that's that, that's great. We're not uh, Firefly is not trying to be another type of blockchain. It's not trying to be a DLT itself, but it, it builds on top of these really powerful technologies. Um, the next thing you might need is you, you might need a, a token smart contract. You need something to uh, manage your transactions that are going to that that contract. Uh, you need to index events that are are coming off of that contract. So you need to write some code to do that. Uh, all of these yellow boxes are are stuff that you have to build if you haven't picked up on that. So uh, you probably also need to write some code to actually upload something DFS. Um, you're gonna need stuff to manage your signing keys. Uh, you need a, a wallet and uh, you need to keep track of which tokens you own versus which tokens somebody else owns based on those events that are coming off of your contract. 
Uh, there's going to be some coordination between data that is uh, on the chain, you know, things like uh, token indexes or, or other pieces of data that have been pinned to the chain, and also data that you need to keep off the chain as well, data that's too either too large or too sensitive to put on the blockchain itself. So you need some, some code to, to link those things and uh, keep track of them and, and treat them as, uh, you know, tr a, a transaction that encompasses both of those things. Likewise, uh, along with that, some, some data needs to be public, some data needs to be private, and then, then finally, you start to get up into the what we think of as the good stuff, uh, the the actual business logic or your your backend API for your application. You know what, you know all of these things below this layer are uh, just the things that you need to actually drive a blockchain. Uh, but then, you know what what does your app actually do? What what business value does it provide? And that that's where we start to get into up in these top layers. And then finally, you probably need some sort of front end for it. You need something for your users to actually use, like a web UI or a mobile app. So there's a lot of different pieces to build in uh, in a Web3 app. So you know, you look at okay, there's there's some great open source projects here at the bottom. Um, there there may be great open source libraries and things that you can pull all together uh, to to make this all, all these yellow boxes uh, that can help you with that. But before Hyperledger Firefly, there wasn't one platform that helped you with all of these things. And so that's what Hyperledger Firefly does. It takes this whole middle section and says, hey, you know what? We have built a, a platform that handles all of this plumbing, all of the, the really hard and maybe not quite so interesting. It's interesting from a technical perspective, maybe not from a business value perspective though, uh, but all of this stuff that you need to drive a Web3 application, Firefly is a common platform that provides this. It's open source. It can be extended. It can connect to many different blockchains. Um, it can connect, connect to private permission chains, uh, public chains. It's it's modular, so it can be extended, and uh, it's it's a common platform that solves all of these problems for you. So you can focus on now this really small top layer, which is your app's code. You can focus on the thing that actually drives your business uh, real value, like the business logic, the user experience, and and all this stuff. And and you can use Firefly's API, Firefly's WebSocket interfaces to uh, work with technologies that develop the web 2 developers are already familiar with and can pick up and use right away and uh, really leverage the power of web 3 quickly so that's that's I think the um you know the the real value of, of firefly in a, in a nutshell for a developer is that like it takes care of this huge portion of the tech stack that you don't have to recreate over and over and over for every web 3 app that you want to build if you still want you know, down maybe maybe you want more control down here at the contract layer, and you want to use a custom contract like we're going to do today. Firefly absolutely lets you do that, and that's that's one of the things we're going to show off today. Um, you can use Firefly's built-in token contracts if you want. Um, you, you're not limited to that though. You can you can plug in whatever smart contract you want, and uh, it still gives you that if you, if you need to go directly to the blockchain or or use your custom uh, use a custom smart contract. Uh, it doesn't lock you out of doing those things. Uh, it's really meant to to complement all of those things and, and build on top of them. So, you know, where does Firefly fit into the picture for uh, for an enterprise? And that's that's really what you know Hyperledger software is really geared toward enterprise. Um, Firefly can can connect to public chains, so it can be really useful for for you know personal projects as well. Uh, it's I, I think it's a, a great fit for that as well, but it's uh, primarily geared toward enterprise applications and uh, it was designed that way from the from the get-go. So you know Firefly you can think of as a, a web3 gateway. but or in the cloud uh, or through a, a hosted provider. And uh, it, it is uh, the way that they can connect to everything Web3, whether that's uh, a consortium chain, uh, whether it's a, a kind of a multi-party network, as we describe it, of other organizations also running Firefly nodes. And they've built a, a distributed network to collaborate using uh, business transactions over a blockchain. Uh, or it could be, you know, things that we tend to think of in the kind of the, the public 
crypto space. Uh, maybe maybe they're connecting to an exchange. Maybe they're connecting to uh, a layer one chain and transferring tokens or, or DeFi apps. Um, Firefly can do all of the above, and it is meant to be a, a one-stop shop for here is a platform that your organization can install, and it can connect to the Web3 world, regardless of where it is or what technology it uses. Uh, what's inside a Firefly node? It is a microservice architecture. So it has a, a lot of different things inside it. I've, I've hinted at that a little bit, that it's pluggable and that it's extensible. Um, I won't go into the, all the detail of every single thing on this diagram. That's uh, There's are, are some already some great resources on YouTube that kind of break down this diagram and talk about all the different components and, and what it is. But, you know, essentially at the top here, you have um, this is the application that you can build. And you can use Firefly's REST APIs. Uh, you can receive uh, events through Firefly's event delivery mechanism, uh, which is today a webhooks and websockets. Uh, but again, it's extensible. Firefly provides uh, an open API Swagger interface, which we will be looking at and using later today, along with the Explorer UI. We'll be looking at that as well. And uh, those are all hosted by Firefly Core. So Firefly Core is kind of like the brain of the entire Firefly node, uh, but it also connects to uh, a bunch of other microservices to actually, um, you know, execute and carry out uh, various types of transactions. So uh, those include a token connector, uh, a blockchain connector, a distributed storage mechanism such as IPFS, uh, a database, and and more. So uh, there's there's lots of different things that all make up a Firefly node. Uh, and again, we're, there's Again, there's more material on YouTube and in the docs on what all those things are, but I just wanted to give it just a brief peek under the hood so you can see that it's, it's not just one thing that we're running. There's a bunch of different services here. Um, the Firefly command line interface, which is what we'll be installing and running here shortly, is a tool that is designed to run all of this in a local development environment set up on your machine. And it takes care of setting up and configuring all of these services for you. So you can just run a couple commands and be up and running. So that's what we're going to run here in just a little bit to set everything up. Um, just a quick shout out to the Firefly community. Uh, we would love for uh, not plugged into the community, uh, please join the Discord. Uh, again, there's a, a dedicated channel for today's workshop in there. Uh, but you can also check out the source code for Firefly on GitHub. Um, if you haven't, I'll, I'll just add a brief plug for um, if, if, if you like this workshop, if you like the project, uh, please go to GitHub and click on this little button and star the project. Um, we would love to get some more stars just to, to drive up uh, visibility of the project in GitHub and uh, in whatever other algorithms pay attention to that. So uh, just a, a quick little advertisement plug there. Um, that is... That's it for slides. So uh, I've tried to keep that brief. I think I kept it to 15 minutes, which was what about what I had allocated it for that. So um, above and beyond, Nico, as usual, you nailed it. <laughs> I, I try, I try. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and hit this link now. Uh, it should be in the chat. I'll just drop it in there one more time in case uh, people have joined late. Um, because I don't think you can see old messages. So there's, again, the, the guide that we're going to be going through. And uh, we're done looking at slides. So um, I'm just going to close that tab. OK. Um, Alex or David, is there anything I should address? Uh, I'm just taking a quick peek at chat here. Any um, any questions or things that I should address? before yeah um i think there was a question around what type of data is stored in the database um in the zoom chat Can oh yeah that's a, that, that? that's a good question um so that's kind of a just a, a general firefly question i'll take that one here real quick um but uh, yeah so so firefly has its own database it keeps um it's basic so blockchains are not great at answering questions like uh, what are all of the events that have been emitted from this particular smart contract with this particular signature? Such as if you wanted to know, um, show me all of the token transfers for a particular type of ERC-20 token. Well, uh, you could figure that out from a blockchain node by starting back at when that contract was deployed and going through all of the different blocks uh, for 
uh, that have been mined since then and looking for events that have been emitted from that contract. Um, that could take a long time, depending on how, how long ago that was. So Firefly keeps track of, uh, this is one example of the things that Firefly keeps in its database. Um, you can tell it to here index this, this contract and store all of the events that you see in a, uh, right now it's, it's, it's some sort of SQL database, um, primarily Postgres is the, the main plugin that's most commonly used. Um, stores it in there in a fast access queryable way. So it's, it is, the short answer is most of the data that's in the Firefly database is um, data that ha has come from the blockchain, uh, but we want to store in a way that can be queried really quickly and, and searched. Um, or it is data that is uh, too sensitive to put on the blockchain and so we keep it in a, a private database um, and have a, a link or a pin uh, to a hash of a transaction where that thing was, was pinned to the blockchain. So uh, hopefully that's a, hopefully that was a, an answer to your question there. Great, thanks. Um, there is no separate distribution for, for okay, th there, is a, there is a build for the Firefly CLI for Mac OS, yes. Um, it should be in the downloads section there. Um, we'll get to that here in just a second once we jump into the guide. Um, there is there is support for ERC eleven fifty five. Um, there, I the bit about the batch transfer. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head exactly what you mean by that, but um, maybe the answer to that question will become more clear as we as we get further into the workshop. Okay. Let's dive in. So um, hopefully you've had a chance, if you don't have Docker, uh, hopefully you had a chance to set that up. Uh, we're gonna start at the beginning now. And I, I've i actually gone and deleted my uh, my Firefly CLI binary on my machine. So I'm gonna start it up. Um, I'm gonna install it from scratch, just like you all are here as we go along. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Is, um, sorry, just quick check. Is, is the font size acceptable uh, through Zoom to people or do I need to zoom in here? not to use Zoom in too many ways in one sentence. Please Could probably be a step double. bigger. Better? More. Is that, is that good? No, I'd have to take a screenshot and open it up. Okay, maybe you can go full screen with the screen share on, on your machine if you haven't. If I go much bigger, we're not gonna be able to fit web interfaces on the screen here. Okay, I'll switch devices. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, just a couple of notes for, for Linux users. Um, it's it's recommended not to run the Firefly CLI as root. Um, I just, I try not to run most things as root if I don't have to. Uh, so it's it, it works better if you run everything as a standard user and uh, add your user to the Docker group. Um, for Windows users, I would highly recommend a Windows subsystem for Linux too. Um, there is not a Windows specific binary for the Firefly CLI, but if you set up WSL, you can run the Linux binary uh, in your WSL environment and it should work fine. Uh, and it works well with Docker desktop for Windows as well. Okay, so in this workshop, here's a picture. I like pictures to, to kind of just explain what it is we're about to do. Uh, so we're going to have Firefly running on our local dev machine. It's going to be running a Firefly core node. It's going to be running an EVM connect blockchain connector, and it'll run a local IPFS node as well. Um, that EVM connect is going to connect to a blockchain remote RPC node running in the cloud, which I have provided a link to below in the, in the command where we'll set all this up. Uh, that RPC node is part of the Polygon Mumbai testnet. Um, there are a bunch of other blockchain nodes that are all a part of this network. Um, so down here, I have my wallet app on my phone that I've set up. I've installed Alpha Wallet on my phone. Um, it has the ability also to connect to some RPC nodes. I have no idea where those ones are. Um, it also has the ability to connect to IPFS nodes. Uh, the beauty of a completely distributed app is a decentralized app is that it doesn't matter where those nodes are running they're participating in the same network so this wallet app here can see things that our firefly node is putting on the chain and putting an ipfs over here as well 
So the idea is that we are going to uh, deploy a contract to the public test net, and uh, we're going to mint a token on it. And end goal of being, hopefully we should see that token show up in our wallet app. All right, so we're going to go through the getting started guide, the first page of it to set up the Firefly CLI. So I'm just going to go to the docs here. Um, I'm going to actually open that in a new tab. And um going to go to the latest release page on GitHub. And I'm just going to grab the latest Firefly CLI binary. Um, if you have Go installed on your computer, it says my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully you all can hear me still. We can still hear you. If you have Go installed on your computer, you can also Go install. Okay, excellent. Um, you can also go install the Firefly CLI. If you don't have Go, don't worry about it. Um, you don't need to install it for this. So I'm just going to go here and grab the latest one. So um, there are binaries for Linux and for Mac OS as well. Um, please be sure you grab the appropriate CPU architecture. Uh, there is a, a difference between ARM64 and x86-64. If you have an Intel CPU or an AMD CPU, you probably want x86-64. I'm on uh, an Apple, Apple Silicon Mac, so I'm going to grab the ARM64 build here, and I'm going to download that one. Um, so please make sure you grab the, the one that's the appropriate architecture, otherwise it, it will not work. Um, and it, it doesn't give you a very helpful message as to why your operating system couldn't run the binary, but it won't work. All right, uh, that's going to download. There is a, a handy little command here. Um, really, you can put this, when, when you extract it, um, you can put the binary anywhere you want. Um, this little handy command, if you do run it with, with root or, or sudo, uh, it will basically just extract the binary and it will move it to uh, user local bin for you, assuming that it is in the downloads folder in your home directory. If, if that's not true, then this one liner won't work, but you're welcome to just extract the targz and put it, uh, put the binary anywhere you want. Uh, I'm going to run that and okay. So now I should be able to which FF. Okay, so I, I have the Firefly CLI installed in user local bin now. That's great. If I try to run it, Mac OS is going to say, "Oh, I'm not going to do that." Okay, um, I'll show you how to get around this real quick. We'll hit okay. Um, yes, terminal bigger. Understood. Sorry about that. Okay, so Mac OS says um, it's not signed. We didn't pay Apple uh, boatloads of money, so it's not signed. Um, so we need to go to system preferences and tell it that we want to run this anyway. So uh, go to security and privacy. And um, I believe this is under general. So it says FF was blocked. So I'm going to allow. Uh, the next time I try to run it, it'll say, are, are you really sure you want to run this? And I'll say, yes. Okay, there. Now it finally runs. So if you're on Mac OS, a couple hoops to jump through there, but um, I don't believe Windows or Linux users will have uh, that issue. Uh, but if you're on Mac, I'll just run you through there. Okay. Um, I will, I will, I'm going to pause running through steps. Uh, hopefully you've been able to get this or you're in, in the process of getting through this. I'm just going to describe what we're going to do next. And uh, and then we'll we'll actually do it here in just a second. So I'm going to go back to the guide um, done on these tabs here, and I'm going to talk through these next couple of steps here before we actually run them. So um, the like I said, the, the Firefly CLI is a tool for creating a, a local development environment. So uh, it has a bunch of different command line flags that we can give it. Um, it has all of the when we ran just ff with no subcommands it listed out all the different subcommands that we can run um, ff init is the let's make this even bigger here um, ff init is the the command that will create a new stack for you if you run that with dash dash help um, the ff init command has a bunch of flags as well as well as two subcommands um, I, I recommend using the the Ethereum or Fabric specific subcommands. They're newer, and uh, they have some uh, some of the new command line flags are on these subcommands. So if we run you know, ff init Ethereum dash dash help, uh, these are all the flags that we can customize for a an Ethereum stack running on our machine. 
I'm not going to get into what all of these uh, are used for, but um, we also use the Firefly CLI to create test environments for Firefly as well. So it's used in our CI pipeline. It's used for uh, running the end-to-end -end tests against and, and all this stuff. So um, a lot of these things are for creating various permutations of all the different ways you can set up Firefly, uh, specifically for automated testing, but it's also really useful for local development and debugging as well. Okay, so for, um, for today, what we're going to do is we're going to init an Ethereum stack. I'm going to name it Workshop, and I only need one Firefly node. I'm not building a multi-party network here, so that's what these first few things do. Um, I'm going to I'm going to set multi-party mode off. I'm going to enable public IPFS, so it's it's private by default. Today, we're going to open it up to peer with public IPFS nodes, though. Um, because we want our, our NFT assets to be uh, visible uh, on the public internet. And uh, we're going to connect to a remote RPC node. So we're not going to run a blockchain node on our machine. We are going to give it the URL of the blockchain node. And uh, you may notice this URL has credentials in it. Uh, these are temporary credentials. Uh, this is a uh, a blockchain, uh, it's an RPC gateway that is hosted by Kaleido. Um, and these, these uh, Kaleido is the company that I work for. Uh, these credentials are temporary for this workshop only, so they will be deactivated afterward. But um, you all are, are welcome to use this one uh, today during the workshop. Uh, we're going to con configure the chain ID for the Mumbai network. Uh, this is, I've, I've gone and just looked that up. It's um, 80,001. And uh, we need to pass in a connector config. So the connector config is just, um, we're going to customize a couple of, uh, of settings that are a little bit different from their default value because this is a public chain. So what we're going to do is uh, we just need to create an evmconnect.yaml file. Um, I probably have one already. Um, yep, okay. So, so I already have this file on my machine because I ran through this earlier, but uh, basically just create a file called evmconnect.yml. Uh, I just created it right in my home directory and uh, that it, and then paste in these contents here. Now, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to tell it, uh, I want to wait for four blocks to see, to make sure that my transaction has been actually mined. Um, it, I want to, uh, and then just a couple of settings for, um, you know, how it computes gas prices and that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a question about the remote RPC node. Um, it it is not no it, it is not just a service returning an HTTP response. It is actually the um, it, it actually is the blockchain node. So it is uh, you do need to connect to a real blockchain node running somewhere. In this case, we're connecting to one in the cloud. Um, you, you're more than welcome to run your own if you'd like, or uh, connect to a different one if you have one already. Um, but uh, this is the one that it. I've tested and we're going to use for today. So um, it's not something that you can just mock because uh, it actually that actually is the blockchain that you're connecting to. Yep, no problem. Uh, is this an infra-based node we are connecting to? It uh, this is a it it is a um, RPC gateway that is hosted by Kaleido. So um, it's it's not Infura. No, no it's um, this is a. The, this is a piece of infrastructure that uh, my company has stood up as well. Okay, uh, so I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to go over to my terminal and I'm gonna close out of Vim here. And I'm going to run this. That's going to initialize a new Firefly stack. That's going to go great. Okay, we've created it. And uh, now you can type ff start workshop to start it up. I'm going to do that. And that will take a few minutes. So um, that's basically going to start and configure all of those services that uh, we were talking about earlier. Um, I will, while this is going, uh, I'll pause here to see if there are questions. Um, I'm going to I'm going to check the the Discord chat as well. Uh, can we host the application at Kaleido? Um, yes, you are more than welcome to host your own blockchain node if you want to. It is uh, it's a lot of work, which is why we we took that. That's outside the scope of the workshop today is how to run your own public blockchain node. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun project if you're interested in, in learning about that, but, but um, it's just outside the scope of today's workshop.
Uh, there's a question about if, if we have a Kaleido account, can we use the Kaleido cloud? Um, great question. Um, this is this is a, a new feature that is not yet available if you log in uh, to, to self-service yet. So um, not not at this time, but but maybe someday. Um, David, Alex, any other questions that I should address here while we're waiting for this all to start up? Nope, I think we're all good. Cool. All right. So we'll just kind of take a, uh, okay, great, we're done here. Yeah, uh, it's pulling a lot of stuff. Yes, there are a lot of Docker containers. Um, I'll just give you a quick peek at what is currently running. So uh, we're running Firefly Core. We're running a token connector for ERC-20 and ERC-721. Uh, there is another one for, for ERC-1155 as well. We're running EVM Connect. We're running a data exchange service, a signing service, and the sandbox as well. Um, so those are all the different things that that just stood up. And uh, yeah, it's got to pull images for for all those things. Um, so hopefully you are getting close to to running this as well. Um, i'm gonna I'm gonna keep going through slow here. Uh, any docker image for FF for the, the there's not a docker image for the Firefly CLI itself, um, which is the the FF command. This is the docker image for Firefly core itself up here. Uh, but we don't we don't provide a, a packaged image that has the command line in it. All right, well, I'm going to hop back over to the guide and talk about what we're going to do next. So uh, before we can do anything with our uh, with our, our Firefly node, uh, well, actually, here let me show you. Yeah, I shouldn't have cleared that out, but um, it it printed two URLs there, and if you if you don't clear your buffer like I just did, um, you should be able to go to uh, localhost. 5000 slash UI, and I should be able to get the Firefly UI up here. It's the Firefly Explorer. Um, you should also get the sandbox, which is on port 5109. And uh, this is a really useful tool for playing around with Firefly as well. Um, hey, Nico. Yeah. Um, can you uh, talk about the port 5000 and turning off the airplay? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Good. Thank you, David. Good call out. Okay. If you are, um, yeah. So if you're, if you're running on Mac OS in one of the recent versions, um, Apple very helpfully created a new service and turned it on for you by default, even though you didn't ask for them because, um, Apple knows what you need. Um, it is, I go here and then go to sharing. Where's sharing? Here it is. And at the bottom here, there's an AirPlay receiver. Um, apparently, AirPlay also uses port 5000, which is the, the port that Firefly Core by default wants to bind to. It doesn't have to. You could change it. Um, it's just easier to uncheck this box um, and start everything up there. So if you're getting a message about something listening on port 5000 and you're on a Mac, um, you want to uncheck this box here. Okay, so uh, yeah, so there's the sandbox, there's the explorer. So we, we've got everything up and running. And uh, now I'm gonna go look back at the guide here and just kind of talk through the next couple of steps. Uh, before we actually do anything, uh, we because this is a public chain, we, we need to fund our account. So um, the uh, on a public chain, you have to you have to pay a, a gas fee for the, the computational power that it takes to, to run your transaction. Uh, so we need to first look up what is the account address, the wallet address that our Firefly node is using. Uh, when the Firefly CLI created everything for you, it generated a wallet for you that's on your local machine, and uh, it has an address. So I'm just going to copy this bit here and paste this in my terminal. Um, I'm going to, I'm just, so if, if you run FF accounts list and then the name of the stack, it will list all the accounts that have been created and their private key. So I'm just, just grepping by the address so I can just see the addresses. Um, the private key is there if you need it, uh, can be useful, but uh, just 
be mindful about, uh, I just didn't want to leak that on the screen. So I'm just grabbing by the address. And so this is my public address that Firefly generated when it set up my stack. Um, yours will be different. It is randomly generated. And so we'll, we will need this in just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. And we're going to go back to the guide here. Um, so in order to fund this wallet, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Polygon provides a faucet. So a faucet is like for, for a test account. Um, the For a test network, a faucet is basically a, a page that you can go to and put in an address and get a very small amount of the blockchain's native currency to be able to run test transactions on there. So we're going to go open that in a new tab. And hopefully the faucet is working. Okay, whew, there we go. Um, yeah, so there's another question about port 5000. Um, we just just talked about that a minute ago. If, if you're on Mac OS, go to system preferences, sharing, and uncheck AirPlay receiver here. That's probably the most likely culprit. Uh, if it's not that, then... Um, You'll need to do a, a little bit more to figure out what is listening on that process. But if you're on a Mac, that's probably the problem. Okay, so I'm just going to paste my, my address here, hit submit. Uh, this will give me one Matic token. I hit confirm. This will say that the transfer is on its way. Uh, tokens will be transferred in one to two minutes. So again, it's going to wait for several blocks to be mined and wait for that, um, that confirmation. Um, in the meantime, we can go to mumbai.polygonscan.com. And uh, we can go look at our wallet here. I'm going to just paste that same address in. And so if I look at it right now, I don't see anything. I bet if I refresh this, I still don't see anything. In just a second here, it should show up. Okay, there we go. So I thought it said it was going to give me one Matic, but it gave me 0.2. That's fine. That'll be more than enough. So I can see my address has 0.2 Matic in it. There still aren't any transactions that I have run on here. Um, there's no ERC-20 token transactions, but that's okay. That's kind of what we expect. We, we've funded our account, so we have the ability to, to do something now. Um, so just gonna do a quick time check here. I think before we go into, uh, before we dive into actually, um, creating the the smart contract and deploying it um i think we'll i think we'll, we may pause here for I, we're about 45 minutes in um maybe take a maybe take a little break in just a minute um i'll i'll, I'll pause and, and ask if there are questions or if people are stuck um, i want to give people time in order to make sure their stack is up and running and um, they've got firefly up and make sure that they've got up to this point i, I don't want to leave people behind uh if we can avoid it so um yeah great great question here uh are the test net funds into the alpha wallet or the firefly nodes address great question so i use here um i went to the command line and i i looked up the address my wallet address for the firefly wallet um the this is this is the signing key that firefly will use when it submits transactions um if you install the alpha wallet on your app uh it probably I do. I believe you have the ability to import a private key there if you want to. Um, I would suggest just having it generate a, a new wallet on your app and uh, use a separate address, and we'll transfer it to that address later. So we haven't haven't done anything with Alpha Wallet yet. We'll come to that sort of at the end of the at the guide uh, if you want to transfer it to that address later. But that's that's a separate address. Great question though. Check the Discord chat too. Okay, great. Just a note: um, there is, we, uh, you're welcome to use the Zoom chat. We also have a Discord channel open, which is um, much more rich chat. Um, you could even post screenshots there if you're stuck on something. And uh, the other advantage is that chat will be preserved after this call ends. And um, 
So that's, I, I would recommend using the Discord chat, but you're, you, I'm not going to say you can't use the, the Zoom chat either if that's just easier. Um, someone mentioned the faucets coming up as a blank page. It did that for me as well. And then I just gave it a second and I hit refresh and then it came up. So um, hopefully all 100 of us hitting it aren't <laughs> hitting it with too much traffic. Um, maybe just try refreshing it and see if it comes up. Great. Okay, uh, there's a, a question in chat here. Someone used Docker Compose down. Um, that probably is, um, if you've done that, I would recommend running FF remove and then the stack name. Um, that will kind of clear out everything here. I'll, I'll just type this in uh, in the chat here. Uh, besides Firefly, Docker, et cetera, is it actually, yes, uh, we are actually running an IPFS node. So if we go look at um, what's running here, uh, there is a Go IPFS container that's running here as well. Uh, just a quick note about IPFS. So at some point in the workshop, we will get to um, publishing an image and a metadata JSON file. Um, I, I will say running an IPFS node locally, including running uh, like just the IPFS desktop app that uh, you can download from the, the IPFS site, it's it's hit or miss whether files will actually successfully get replicated to public IPFS gateways where other apps can download them. And uh, usually it comes down to networking problems. Uh, I'm in, I'm sitting in an office right now, so I'm behind a NAT, and I don't have the ability to configure the firewall. Um, sometimes it's able to push files to gateways, and, and it just works. Other times, uh, the file just never ends up replicating. So that's um, in, a, in a production setting, you would want to run an IPFS node in probably the cloud or a data center or not on a, on a laptop behind a NAT. Um, you want to run it somewhere where you can configure the networking appropriately to uh, expose the correct ports to IPFS so that it has um, nothing blocking its peering ability with other IPFS nodes. Yeah, IPFS is also running in, uh, in, in Docker here as well. Um, yes, Kaleido has the ability to run IPFS nodes in the cloud. Uh, there is not currently a way in the Firefly CLI to automate the configuration of a remote IPFS node. Um, that's something that the Firefly CLI could be enhanced to do, but it, it doesn't, it just doesn't generate the appropriate config for that today. All right. Um, tell you what, we are, we're 10 minutes to the top of the hour here. Let's take a, uh, a five minute break. Uh, I'm gonna actually step away from my computer, go grab uh, something to drink and um, we'll come back and I'll, I'll answer any more questions. And, and hopefully hopefully, folks, uh, this will give folks a few more minutes if you're still stuck, we're just trying, trying to catch up and uh, we'll make sure that we get as many people caught up to, to this point as we can before we keep moving on in the workshop. So we'll take a quick five minute break and I'll see you at five minutes till the top of the hour.
Okay, I am back. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at some questions that have come in here while I was away. Um, an error on FF init is interesting. Um, you could try adding um, the, a dash dash verbose flag to your init command like this. Um, there was a question about, uh, can we use another account instead of the Firefly default account? Um, yes, so we're, we're not going to for today for the workshop, but in uh, just technically speaking in what is possible, absolutely. Uh, there are ways to, um, Firefly is very flexible when it comes to key management and signing. The, the, the implementation that we have running right now is a very simple, straightforward file-based wallet on the uh, Firefly signer node that we looked at in um, this one of the Docker containers that I'm currently running. Uh, but there are ways to, to create more keys, more wallets, and, um, and also use an external signer as well. Firefly supports a, a lot of different features in, in that regard. Um, how can you check the data stored in IPFS using Firefly? Um, yeah, we'll we'll get to the uh, the data APIs in Firefly in just a little bit. Um, but you could, um, you know, IPFS has its own REST API. You, you can use you can query that REST API to look up data that's stored in it, um, just like you could if it was running somewhere else as well. Just check Discord here. Okay, cool. Um, let's give it two more minutes. Um, I It's about lunchtime here in the US, so um, I actually grabbed some food. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a couple bites here. Um, we'll uh, we'll kick off in the next phase of the workshop here in just a little bit, but I think I think we're running right on schedule here right now. So this is, this is great. So hopefully everyone is uh, able to work through any issues they have getting things started up. Um, if you're still stuck, let us know. We're here to help. Um, yeah, let me drop the Discord link in there again. There's the invite link to the Hyperledger Discord. And uh, again, we're in the, um, if you scroll down to the Firefly section, we're in the Firefly Workshop channel down here. And that's, this is the, the chat that we've got going here. Yep, no problem. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, where is the mintable? Yep, we'll be, um, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. That's the next part of the workshop. There was also a question in chat about um, event streaming and Firefly's uh, WebSocket event delivery mechanism. Um, it's a it's a great topic. 
a little bit outside the scope of today's workshop. I would love to, it's honestly probably worth the workshop just on its own, uh, just all about events, but um, don't have time for that one today. Okay, we are gonna move on. So hopefully everyone is uh, got their Firefly stack running and their wallet funded. And we're gonna go create a smart contract now. So there are lots of different ways you can create a smart contract. Um, I'm not here to be a smart contract development expert. I'm just here to give you a link to a thing that you can click and do in your browser really quickly for today's workshop. So um, don't take this as the recommended way to do it um, necessarily, but I, it, I, I do think generally speaking, starting from something that has been already vetted by uh, a wide open source community and used in production and battle hardened uh, like open Zeppelin contracts and, and libraries that you can build on there is a fantastic idea. Um, anywhere where I can leverage something that is open source that's already built, already tested, uh, and rather than writing it again on my own, I'm gonna do that. So, uh, so this is a great way to, to get started really quickly. I also think it happens to be a, uh, a good way to, if you really want to go deep on building your own custom token contract, it's, it's a good starting point at least. So uh, we're gonna pop open the, the contracts wizard here. And uh, we're gonna, today we're, we're focusing on the NFTs. So we're gonna use the ERC 721 contract. Um, you can give it a name and you can give it a symbol. And uh, I probably need to zoom in for this tab as well. Sorry about that. Uh, for this one, <laughs> sorry, um, Alex just pointed out that I forgot to turn my screen share back on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So sorry about that. So uh, here we are in this tab. And I, all I did was I went back to our guide, scrolled down here and clicked on this link, open up the contracts wizard in a new tab. And uh, here we are. So uh, we're going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call mine Firefly NFTs. And a symbol, we'll call it FF NFT or whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Um, we don't need to put in a base URI here. You can, if you like, so this is where there's lots of different ways to do NFTs, lots of different ways, even to do ERC721. Um, what we are going to do today is we're going to set a unique URI for every token. Um, some contracts are set up such that there's a common base URI for all tokens, and uh, each token it has a unique index that is appended to that. Um, so that's another way of doing it. Uh, we're going to use a unique URI for everyone, and we'll set that uh, in the contract later. Um, we're going to check some features here. We want to make this mintable. We're going to let the contract itself decide the IDs, uh, so we don't have to tell it what token ID to mint. We just When we call the mint function, it will just mint the next one available. And uh, or like I said, we're going to turn on the URI storage option, which allows us to customize the URI per token. And I believe I'm just going to double check my instructions in the guide. ERC721, mintable auto increment IDs, URI storage, and a cool name. Okay, I think we've got all those. Uh, my, my cool name is debatable, but I, I went with something that works. Um, this is what we need so far. So as you can see, as you're checking and unchecking these boxes, it's actually writing some code for you, which is great. Um, if you haven't seen it before, this is Solidity. Solidity is a, a easy to use programming language that you can write in, and, and debug and test in an IDE, and then it will get compiled down to uh, Ethereum virtual machine or EVM bytecode. And that's what we actually deploy to the blockchain node. So uh, the easiest way to do this, and this is what the guide recommends, is um, is to just do it all in your browser. Now you could uh, you could hit download, and you could copy this source code file to like a hard hat project or a truffle project, and you could compile it locally um, and do all that. You're more than welcome to do that if you want to. For today, I'm just going to hit open and remix. I'm, I'm going to try to do this all in my browser here, and uh, we're going to use remix to compile it. 
And so it'll just open it up because this, this handles all the dependencies and everything like that. So it's it really just streamlines stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to come over here and hit compile. And I know this is probably pretty small on the screen. Um, okay, so great. We've compiled it. We're going to come back to this page in just a minute. But I wanted to point out these two buttons right here, ABI and bytecode. Uh, and then we'll copy it to the clipboard. So it basically takes the compiled output and puts it on your clipboard. That's what we're going to go give to Firefly here in just a minute. All right, let's go back to the guide. So uh, we are going to use Firefly now to deploy our smart contract to the Polygon testnet. Uh, we can do this right in our browser through the Swagger UI using the contracts deploy endpoint. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open the Swagger UI and automatically scroll me down to the contracts deploy endpoint. I'm going to hit try it out. Um, there's sort of some instructions here in uh, in the guide, which we can use. We don't need necessarily all. This is going to list all the different fields that are possible to send here. Uh, we don't need to set all those. So I'm just going to paste that in here. Um, these are the really the only two that we need to set for today. If our contract had constructor arguments that were required, we could list them out here, but this one doesn't. So I'm going to go back to Remix. It says paste bytecode here, paste ABI here. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'll copy the bytecode back to my Swagger UI, and that's going to be just a big, long hex string. So this is the compiled EVM bytecode that actually is the program that the blockchain will run. Um, so definition, this is where we paste the ABI here. Um, you may notice these these don't say bytecode and they don't say ABI. And the reason is uh, Firefly works with more than just Ethereum. So we use, we sort of took a step back when we we're naming things and use more generic names. Um, so we call it contract. Um, this is the thing that actually is the smart contract. And because uh, not all blockchains call the compiled thing bytecode, uh, they may call it something different. Um, Likewise, not every blockchain uses a thing called an ABI. Uh, they may call it something different, or um, some blockchains may not even have that concept. So uh, we call it uh, contract and definition. Um, so I'm going to copy the ABI now, and I'm going to paste that here. Uh, it's important to note this is not this should not be wrapped in a string. This is a big JSON array that I copied, and so you want to set the, when you hit copy, it will give you the whole array. And if I scroll back up here to basically the definition should be an, a JSON array. Okay, so that should be everything that we need. And I'm going to hit execute. And this will take uh, a little bit of time. So if you, you may notice that this is set to confirm true. And so, um, yep, uh, I'll show that in just a second here. Um, so this, what confirm true means is uh, we'll actually block the HTTP request. The, the response will block until the mess the transaction is confirmed on the chain. And we told it that we want four blocks of, of confirmations. Um, and so it's going to wait for four blocks to see that the contract that it deployed is in all of them to make sure that, yep, this is this uh, the the history of the chain has not changed. And uh, okay, great, cool. Um, Someone asked what the difference between using Firefly CLI, FF Deploy is, and the REST API. Um, it's a great question. So FF Deploy came first, and it goes. It was before we added this endpoint to Firefly. So this endpoint is newer. It, it is the more recommended way to do it uh, because the transaction itself will show up in Firefly. And we'll go take a look at that in just a second. Um, Firefly, the FF Deploy command goes straight to the blockchain connector, and it sort of skips over the Firefly API. It still works. It still gets something on chain. Um, I can't remember if it allows you. It, it may be less flexible than this um, than this endpoint is. So this this endpoint is designed so that you can use it in production. Uh, FF Deploy is um, really a, a development tool. Okay, I think I may have gone that through that a little bit too fast. Um, what to do after compiling? Yes. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I went. Here, I went to the guide and I clicked on this link. This will open up the Swagger UI, which has a whole a list of a whole bunch of different endpoints. Um, I think it automatically expanded this one. When you come to any of them, though, there's a, a button over here that says "Try it out," and you need to click that, and that's what makes this part editable. 
Um, we're going to be doing this for a bunch of different requests here. So kind of just get used to that pattern in this interface. This is um, this is a very common interface. This is the Swagger UI uh, that many different services used. Um, it's a, a cool open source thing for interacting with APIs. Um, so then I just copied this payload right here. And I started with this. And this is we just need to fill out bytecode and ABI here. So that's that's what I pasted here. And then I got those by going to Remix copying ABI and bytecode. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully folks are caught up with that. Okay, uh, we did get a, a response here. Awesome, great. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, most of it is the input. But if we scroll down, sorry, that was... Sorry, that was the input. We've got to keep scrolling for the output here. Uh, if I scroll all the way down here at the bottom of the 200 response body, we'll see down here, there's a transaction hash and there's a contract address. This is the important thing that we will look for. Um, the other thing that I want to see is the block number that this was deployed in. Um, so we don't get that back in the same response, but we can go look in the Firefly Explorer now. And now this refresh button has popped up here. So there's new data available. So to the question earlier of why, why would you use this API instead of FF deploy is because now we can do this. Now Firefly itself is aware that a smart contract was deployed. So I can go look at that contract deployment transaction. Uh, I can click on it and then I can click this little button, which will pop out this thing here. And I can scroll all the way to the bottom here. Again, a lot of stuff. Um, and I should be able to see Here's my contract address. Um, here's the block number that it went into. We're going to use that in just a second. Um, so, so this is a good place you can go look it up. We can also just go look this up on Polygon Scan now. So if we go back and we refresh our page for our, I still have this Polygon Scan tab open. If we refresh it, we'll see a transaction now from my Firefly node. And here was a, a contract creation. Uh, we can... Oops, uh, let's go into the transaction here and we can see like, again, all, all the same stuff that Firefly was just showing us, we can see on the public blockchain explorer now as well. So the two key things here that we'll need for the next step are the, the contract address, uh, which is right here, and the block number, which is right here. Uh, now we can see that it's been confirmed at 122 blocks now. Um, so we can either get this from Polygon Scan or from the Firefly Explorer itself. Uh, we'll need that for the next step. So um, actually, we'll come back to that in uh, in a couple steps here. Now what we're going to do, so we've deployed the contract to Fire, to Fire through Firefly to the blockchain. Um, we haven't told Firefly how we want to use this contract, though. Um, so that's the next step that we're going to do. Uh, we're What we're... The goal that we're working toward is we want to tell Firefly that this is a, a token contract and uh, that this is a, an ERC-20 token contract, um, but it, we've also customized it. So we need to tell it about some of its customability. Uh, looks like somebody in chat had a, an API call timeout. Um, maybe Alex or David can, can help look at that. Um, guessing that may have been either uh, may not have funded your wallet or uh, there was an issue with the, the blockchain transaction itself, but um, you might want to double check to see what actually happened on chain to see if it, it made it that far. Just check Discord here. Okay, looks like, all right, just trying to keep an eye on questions and make sure I'm not going too far ahead of people here, but it looks like, looks like we're doing well. So, um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to, so like I was explaining earlier, Firefly has the concept of a, um, it's 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 multi-chain and it's also not blockchain specific. So we want to create an, an FFI, a Firefly interface, uh, which is a generic way to describe a contract, a smart contract. Uh, it's, it's similar to the Ethereum ABI format. Uh, but it is more blockchain generic. Uh, Firefly has the ability to go from an Ethereum ABI to a Firefly ABI, and it's going to basically take the ABI and, and wrap it 
in a, a Firefly generic format. So uh, we can do that with the contracts interface generate uh, API here. So I'm going to click that. Um, it's going to open my Swagger UI here. And I'm going to hit try it out. And all we need to put here is uh, we just need an, an input ABI. So I'm going to paste that here. And then we're going to go back to Remix. Uh, there was a question about where do I get the ABI and bytecode from? I see in the chat. So that's you get it from Remix. And uh, it's this button right here. It's where you get the ABI. Uh, this one right here gives you the bytecode. So we needed that in the previous step. Um, I'm, I need the ABI again, though, for this step. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to click that and copy it. I'm going to paste my ABI here. And I'm going to hit execute. So this is just a, a convenience function. You can write a um, you can write an FFI by hand if you want to. Uh, if you're using Hyperledger Fabric, there is not an ABI equivalent in Fabric. So uh, you you have the ability to create this FFI and define it for your contracts interface. But um, fortunately for Ethereum, which we're using today, there is a a conversion available for that. Uh, okay, so basically this is just a, a helper. Uh, so we're going to copy this whole payload that we get from here. I think this button should copy to my clipboard. Let's see. Copy that. And then we're going to go to the contracts interface endpoint, which is now we're actually going to load the interface, the generated interface to Firefly. Again, we'll hit try it out. And then we'll paste this whole thing here. Uh, we do need to give it a name and we need to give it a version. Those are the only other two mandatory fields. Um, we call this, uh, we'll call it Firefly tokens. I don't think you can put a space in the names so just be aware of that. There's some, some rules about, I think uh, letters, numbers, dashes and underscores are okay in the names, but um, they're, there are some restrictions on it to make them URL safe in some cases. Uh, a version, we'll just say v1.0.0. You, you can put in whatever you want in these two fields, but they, they are required. I hit execute. And scroll down. Great. OK, so we got a 200 from the server. And we got a. This is a contract interface ID. So this is this is the important part that we'll we'll use in our next step. Um, hopefully, I'm not going too fast through here. If you are, um, if you're struggling to keep up, all of these instructions are written in the guide. So hopefully, you can catch back up or follow along here. Uh, description is optional. Nope, don't need that. Name and version are the the two things that are required in addition to what was generated. Um, there's a question about FFIs and tokens for Hyperledger Fabric. Um, in theory, tokens on Fabric would work fantastically. Uh, there today are not any token connectors in existence for Firefly on Fabric, though. So that would be a, a small piece of software that would need to be written. Um, in terms of how you generate an FFI for Fabric, it's um, it's a lot of JSON writing. <laughs> it's uh, we. There's there's really no way to automatically generate them from a uh, from a fabric uh, chain code today because the fabric chain codes can be written in a variety of languages. There's no one standard for how interfaces are defined on a, on a fabric smart contract. Cool. All right. Uh, just looking at the time, we are doing well. I will I'll pause here uh, and just see if there's any other questions or um, just maybe give folks a minute if they need to get through creating the, the contract interface. Yeah, to copy the entire response, I think on the Swagger UI. Um, sorry, this is a request. 
when you look at the, the response body, I think this button copies it to your clipboard. I'll just verify that here. Yes, it does. Okay, then keep moving on here. So where are we up to at this point? We have deployed the contract to the chain. We have told Firefly about the, um, the interface of our particular contract. We haven't told Firefly what to do with it yet. And uh, we haven't told Firefly about a specific instance of this interface that we want to start tracking. That's what we're going to do next. So um, we have a few pieces of information now that we had from multiple previous steps. So we're going to kind of combine all those. So hopefully you remember where things came from. Uh, feel free to scroll back up in the guide if, if you can't remember where we saw certain things. But uh, the things we need are the deployed contract address, and the block number. So the two places we can look up those are on Polygon Scan. We can look up, you can either go to your account and uh, you can look up the, the transactions. And I, I can see here, I've got, here's my contract address and here's my block number. Uh, or you can go to the Firefly Explorer and to find it here, uh, the I think the, probably the easiest way is to click on the, this contract deployment transaction and then to go here and click this little pop out icon. And if we scroll to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, here's our block number. Here's our contract address. Okay. So those are two important pieces of information we need. Um, we're going to use the, the token pools endpoint. I'm going to open. Uh, which, okay, here we go. Sorry, I'm just starting to get too many tabs open here. <laughs> I'm hit try it out. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this payload here, and that's what I'm gonna fill in here so that I can just replace all these things. Okay, so my deployed contract address. I'm gonna get that from Firefly Explorer. Hit copy on here. And watch out because it'll want to double quote it. Um, block number. I'm going to grab that from here. Um, even though it is a number, pass it in as a string. And the interface ID. Okay, so this is this is the ID that we got from the previous step. So if we go back to the output of where we created the, uh, sorry, I have, keep having to move the Zoom chat around the screen there. Um, so we're looking at the output here from our, our contracts interfaces request that we just made. Uh, we need to grab this interface ID. And what this is going to do is this is going to link the token pool that we're creating to this particular contract interface. This tells Firefly, hey, this is an ERC-20 token, but it's got some extra stuff on it because we checked all those little boxes in the contracts wizard to add features that are not necessarily in the base ERC-20 spec. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that, put that right here in our interface ID, and then your token name and token symbol are what we put in here originally. So I called mine uh, Firefly NFTs and FFNFT. Um, I actually can't remember if a space is allowed there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna not put that there. The symbol does need to match, so it's uh, FF NFTs is what I called mine, and it's non fungible. And that was pasted in there from the from the template. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't go through that too fast. I'll review it here before I submit it. But contract address and block number we got from Firefly Explorer by. I just went back to my, my Explorer dashboard, 
It's my contract deployment. And I click this pop out, scroll all the way down. Here's my block number, here's my address. So that's where I got that from. Okay, then this interface ID is the UU ID from the, the previous step that we just did, which was our where we posted the contract interface. And so I just copied that from here and put it right in here. And then my name and my, my symbol is, it needs to match what I put in my smart contract when, back when we wrote it in the Open Zeppelin wizard. Uh, and the name can be something different here. Um, invalid character, curly brace looking for beginning of object. Um, make sure you are don't have like a stray comma or something in your um, in your JSON that you pasted. That looks like uh, a JSON deserialization issue. All right, so I'm gonna hit execute. Uh, oh. <laughs> Okay, remember what I said about the uh, the name, the symbol needing to match. Well, I didn't make it match. Um, back here in my contract, I put FFNFT singular, and here I put FFNFTs plural. So I need to get rid of that S. All right, we got a two hundred two. So that's. Um, the server has accepted our request and it is uh, it's activating that token pool. We should be able to go to the Firefly Explorer now. And now we should see some new stuff here. I can, I can see my one failure because I, I had that failed request because I had the typo in it. Um, so there was my token pool, token pool that failed. Um, but I, now I have a token pool confirmed as well. So if I click on here, uh, I can see that. I can now also go over to, on the left side, uh, I can go to the tokens dashboard and I can see my FF NFT pool here. Now there's no transactions on it. We haven't done anything with it, but it's here. And Firefly is now tracking this token from the time that we created it on the blockchain in the original block number that it was deployed in. So that means uh, any transaction, even if I had already minted some tokens in the past, say I'm pointing, maybe, maybe this, maybe we want to use Firefly for a, a, a contract that's already been on a public chain somewhere. You put it in, uh, put it, point it to the contract address and the block number that it was deployed in. It will go find all of the events that have already happened on it. Uh, it's going to Firefly is going to store those events in its local database. That was a question that came up earlier. Was Firefly put in its database? Well, this is a great example. Um, it's going to put those events in its database so that you can query them and it can also populate this dashboard here. All right. That was a bunch of REST requests. Uh, we are through probably the, the most tedious and boring part of the workshop now. Um, now we're going to do some fun stuff. Okay. Now we're going to upload some token assets. So before we mint a token, uh, we want some stuff to have our token point to. Uh, one of the cool things about ERC. 721 is that you can give it a, a URI, have it point to something and have it represent something that is not on the blockchain. And it becomes a, a sort of a tracking identifier for that thing. Uh, I'm going to use this little animated Firefly pixel art. You're welcome to use whatever image you want. Um, doesn't even have to be an image. Could be a, a document, could be a video, could be whatever you want. Um, please make sure you have the, the appropriate license and permission to use it. Um, you have my permission to use my animated pixel art here. Um, but yeah, so we're going to upload this image. Uh, we're also going to upload a metadata JSON as well, uh, which will look like this. So we'll, we'll get to that step in just a minute. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, um, with the ERC721, it's the thing that our token will actually point at is not the image directly. It points out a piece of JSON, which then points at the image. So uh, we're, we'll start with the image though. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close some of these extra swagger tabs now because uh, we don't need them open anymore. Um, just to kind of keep things streamlined here. Don't need this, I don't need that either, yep. Okay. So we can use the Swagger UI again to upload some data as well. 
Uh, we'll hit try it out. Um, there's some instructions in the guide on how to use this endpoint is a little bit different because we're going to be uploading a file. So you want to change the the default here is JSON because uh, you can you can just post raw JSON payloads here as well. Um, but we want to actually upload a file, so change this to multi-part form data. And then if we look at our instructions again, it says uncheck the metadata and the validator fields as well. Trust me, bro. That's that's the way to do it. Um, okay, then we need to choose our file. Um, I've got my little Firefly GIF here. Hit open and I'm hit execute. Okay, so right now this just uploads the file to Firefly and then it gives me an ID. Now, there's lots of different things you can do with data in Firefly. Um, perhaps I wanna share this piece of data privately with another Firefly node run by a different organization. Well, Firefly lets you do that. Um, perhaps I want to pin this to the blockchain and uh, send a message to many different Firefly nodes that are run by different organizations. Firefly lets me do that too. Um, in my case, I want to actually push this piece of data up to IPFS and share it with the world. Um, Firefly also lets me do that. So it doesn't make an assumption about just because you give it a piece of data automatically what you want to do with it. So um, handing the data to Firefly and then telling it what you want it to do with the data are two separate steps. Uh, so the next step we're going to do is to upload it to IPFS. Um, so you can actually just, so I'm going to copy this ID. Um, you can you can do it in the same tab if you want. You can just scroll down here to data, data ID, blob, publish. Publishing it will send the data payload from Firefly itself to the IPFS node. Hit try it out. Um, we don't we don't need that, so we'll just put an empty body there, and then we need to paste the um, the data ID here. Okay, hit execute. Great. Okay, so we got a 200 response body, and we got an IPFS CID. This is really important. Um, this is basically the IPFS hash for the data payload that we uploaded. So the the guide talks about that. Um, it's in in the public field at the bottom of that request. So just to recap what we did there, we uploaded a GIF to Firefly, and then we told Firefly, "Hey, take this." this ID and push it to IPFS. And it did that. And it gave us the hash for that data once it landed on IPFS. Go ahead and pause here. Um, see if there's any questions or just give folks a minute to make sure that we're up to this point in the workshop here. All right, so a couple questions in the chat. Um, is it possible to use ERC 4907, an extension of 721, instead of ERC 721? Um, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not familiar with 4907, um, but technically speaking, yes. As long as a token standard, which I, I think all of them do, have the ability to mint, transfer, um, and and, and to be able to um, mint, so so the, the functionality that Firefly uses for tokens is mint transfer approvals and burning a token. Um, so as long as there are ways to do that in your token standard, which as far as I know, uh, pretty much all of them have support that minimum capability, um, you could create a token connector that, that works with a, a different standard or an extension on that standard. Um, if it's an extension of 721, it may just work with the existing token connector that's here already. Um, let's see, there's a question about uploading each file if I have multilateral legal documents. Um, sorry, I'm not 
I'm sure exactly what you mean by a multilateral document. Um, but if, if you had many different files and you wanted to treat them separately, they yeah, you would call the, the upload API separately for each one of them. Um, if if there's more to that question that I'm missing, uh, please please elaborate. I'm happy to, to try to answer it. Um, upgradable smart contracts. Yeah, that's that's a, a whole topic uh, in itself. Um, Firefly does support upgradable contracts. Um, I think uh, so. Actually, the <laughs> the maintainer who is who is the resident expert on upgradable contracts is uh, actually on vacation right now, um, but. Be a great question for him. I, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head. I think everything just works the same. Um, but uh, Andrew Richardson is the the one to ask about that one because I know he he's actually done some work on that uh, in Firefly specifically. Um, the question about what fields I filled in for the binary blob attachment. Um, just the ID is required, which we, yes. So what, all I did there was, um, so this was the, the, where we filled out here, where I uploaded, I attached my file here, and then I got the ID right here. I just copied that. Then I scrolled right down here to data, data ID blob publish. And I pasted that data ID in right here. You don't need any other fields in this request body. It can just be an empty, J it needs to be an empty JSON object because Firefly expects it to be a JSON object, uh, but it can be completely empty. Hopefully that helps. Um, let me just check Discord. Uh, there's a question about how long the Kaleido RPC node will be valid. Um, I, I'm planning on shutting it off later today. Uh, just because it's, I, I don't want to leave those credentials floating around the internet for too long. Okay, cool. Any other questions before we move on to the next step? All righty. So now uh, we're going to create a metadata JSON. Now, uh, the reason we uploaded the image first is because the metadata JSON needs to actually reference that image. So we needed to get the IPFS hash for the image because that needs to go into our JSON file. So like I said earlier, our um, typically, like if you go look up uh, an NFT that's for sale on OpenSea, for instance, um, it will the URI for that token will point to a metadata JSON file. The If you go look up the EIP-721, um, it says that it's an optional thing that an ERC721 can have. Um, where is, I probably just scrolled right past it. Yep, okay. So the metadata extension is optional for uh, ERC721, but if you do provide it, here's what it looks like. Uh, so you can go read up on the, the actual standard if you want to. Um, this, is, this is an optional add-on to it, but Pretty much anybody that's doing NFTs in like a marketplace or something like that, um, it's it that's what people do. Okay, so uh, we're going to create this small piece of metadata JSON, and this is what our NFT is going to point at uh, when we actually mint it onto the blockchain. So what I'm going to do is uh, I need to create a file with this in it. Um, I think I actually already have one on my disk already. So. Um, because I, I ran through this earlier when I, when I set it up, but you could just, um, you can create a file with contents like this. Uh, just a couple things to note. If you did not use the image that I used, you will have received a different hash right here. And uh, you need to change that. So this needs to be whatever, whatever CID you got from the previous step here in this field right here, okay? So um, you can give it, whatever name you want, whatever description, uh, you can give it a different external URL, customize this however you want. This is this is your token that you're minting. Uh, you don't have to use the same thing that I did. Uh, this is just provided as an example. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the same two steps that I did with the, the, the GIF, and now I'm gonna do that with the metadata as well. So here's my metadata. I hit open, to set that one, I hit execute. I get a different ID back here. 
And again, I'm just going to scroll right down and now tell it to send that to IPFS. Hit execute. And boom, there's my, that's my IPFS CID for the metadata. Now, in theory, uh, if I've done this correctly, um, if I go to, I think it's IPFS.io, slash IPFS. Uh, it may not work. <laughs> and this is, I think, this is due to, to my NAT configuration. Um, if I, I do, for some reason, um, the GIF worked fine, uh, but the, the metadata JSON hasn't, which is a bummer because I wanted to actually show, show it to you live, but, um, oh, you know what? That's a, <laughs> that was from a different workshop. I must've copied and pasted that CID from something else. Um, anyway, so you can, uh, yeah, here's, here's the real one. Sorry about that. That was from my last workshop where we did an NFT, uh, back at Hyperledger Global Forum. Uh, IPS to IO, IPS to IPFS slash. This should be my GIF. Copy the right one here. Well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, this is again where I was talking about at the beginning of the workshop that you know, in a production situation, you would definitely want your IPFS node uh, to be more accessible to the public internet rather than running on a, a local dev machine. Um, but that is, uh, that's okay. It may just take some time. Uh, it, it may get there eventually, but uh, we can we can keep moving on. We can actually mint the data or we can mint the token and still see the, the transaction on the public chain. That'll be, that'll still work great. All right. So now we are finally ready to mint our token. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the tokens mint API. I'm just going to click that, open it in a new tab, and that will scroll me down here. Try it out. Um, I'm going to copy this payload. So these are the only fields that we need. Um, so amount is always one for an NFT. If this were an ERC-20 or a fungible token, we could put in any amount that we wanted here. If we wanted to mint like 20 of them or a million of them all at once, um, we could do that. NFTs are always, because of the way the, the transaction and the, the actual smart contract is written, they are one token per transaction. And that's that's just the way the contract works. Um, so what we're gonna, we're gonna mint one. Uh, we're gonna put in our Firefly wallet address here. Uh, I can go get that again by running FF accounts list workshop and get that right here. I'm just paste that in. And then I'm gonna paste my IPFS CID here. Um, I can go, Make sure I get the real one here. So this is from my metadata. I'm going to copy this. Oops. Paste it here. And I'll hit execute. Okay. And that minted a token. So now... I see there's a few questions in chat. I will come, I will address those in just a second. Um, now, if I go back to my Firefly dashboard, I should see, hit refresh, boom, there it is. It took it a second because it was still uh, waiting for that confirmation to come in on the blockchain. But here it is, here's my mint event. Here's my uh, the signing key that minted it. And it was to the same key. It was a mint, so it was from the zero address. And here's the IPFS URI that I put in when I minted my token. Now, I should also be able to go back to Polygon Scan and I could either look at my wallet address and refresh this page and I could see that I've called the safe mint function or I should be able to go to the contract address and I can see because this was a transaction on this contract, I can see here, that it was, uh, there's there's that same transaction. Uh, I can go look at that particular transaction. I can see the actual data that came in with it and all this good stuff. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here. There's some questions coming in. Um, where do I get the IPFS CID? That was um, so this I got it from the the data data ID blob publish endpoint. I uh, just scroll down here in the response body. There's a field called called blob public, and this is this is the IPFS CID right here. And I had one of those for the image. And I have one of those for the metadata as well. Um, sorry, there's a question that says, please share it here. I'm not sure what it is though. Um, I'm happy to share it, but I'm, I'm not sure what's asking to be shared. Um, there's a question about what here is open source versus what is part of Kaleido stack. Um, everything that we've used today is uh, is completely open source. The, the only thing that we're depending on Kaleido for, which you absolutely don't have to use Kaleido's node, is, is the blockchain node itself. Um, and that's just because it's, it's a lot of work to, to stand up a blockchain node and connect to a public chain. Um, so you know, you're welcome to use some other provider if you want. Um, there are plenty of, plenty of blockchain node providers out there that you could connect this to. Um, but all the software that we're running on our machines is 100% open source software. It's a part of the, the Hyperledger project. So uh, that's that's really what we're focusing on here. Um, when you have multiple images or documents, would you have multiple public responses? Yeah, so each, if, if you want to upload multiple files and have them each addressable as a separate file, you would have different a different hash for each file, yes. Hey, Nico, I think there's a question in Discord about how long the um, RPC will be available. Yeah. Yep, I, I did mention that earlier, but uh, I'm planning on shutting down the credentials for it later today because I just I don't want them floating around the Internet um, for, for too long. Um, yeah, so so the, the short version of the story is the running the um, running a, a polygon public RPC gateway is not a feature that's of Kaleido that's publicly available yet. <laughs> so um, it's a it's a feature that is available internally that we've provided just for today's workshop. Uh, just reading through the the questions here. Yeah, you 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 can most certainly zip a whole bunch of files together and upload them to IPFS. Uh, they would always be downloaded together though and, and treated as one file at that point. Uh, is there a way to do what we've done in batch form? Um, so, I mean, I, I would recommend writing some code to do what we've done if you want to do a batch of them and have your application manage what does a batch mean for your application. The, Like I said, the, the smart contract itself is going to, uh, like each NFT itself needs to be a separate transaction because that's the way the standard works. Um, each file upload itself to IPFS is going to be a discrete operation as well. And so, so there's lots of things that are just because of the way the system works are all discrete operations. The, the Firefly SDK, there is a, an SDK for Node.js that is, um, it's, it's, it's a great, if you want to write a, an app in Node or TypeScript, uh, you can use that. And it's a great starting point. It provides easy to use functions for all of these things that we're doing by hand. So today, the, the workshop was really to kind of like go through it and make the make the things by hand uh use use all the apis um but obviously you wouldn't want to do all, all this by hand um uh, in production so this is sort of like you know getting hands on with the apis to do by hand what you would then go write an application to drive and automate and and build that batch functionality into uh does firefly convert api to ffi to define smart contract interface and generate the api um Yes, so there is a uh, there there's an endpoint that we used earlier. Uh, if you scroll back up here, sorry, not that far. Uh, when we generate the contract interface, this is the endpoint that does it. That's part of Firefly Core. It's really just a convenience um, endpoint there to to help you get started with that. Um, 
So, uh, other questions about Kaleido? Yeah, I, so I would love to talk about Kaleido. Um, I, I could talk about Kaleido all day long. Um, that's not the really the focus of today's workshop. Um, this is a this is a Hyperledger workshop, and we're today the focus of the workshop is the open source Hyperledger Firefly project. Um, you know, would love to to get in touch. Kaleido does have its own Discord server. If you want to hop in there and talk about Kaleido specific stuff, um, we'd love to chat with you there. So um, let's let's talk about it. But uh, this is probably not the the time at the moment. But uh, glad glad you're interested in it. Um, someone saying their view of the sandbox does show all three columns, but not the left navigation bar. Um, this is what the sandbox looks like. I'm not sure what the left navigation bar would be. So one thing to note when you when you're running in uh, when you've turned off multi-party mode, the messages tab will not show up here, which I don't know if that's what you're seeing, but uh, tokens and contracts tabs are available, but messages is not when when you have disabled multi-party mode. All right, so we are we're almost at the end of the guide here. So at this point, we have minted the token. It is available on a, on a public chain. It's out there. Um, and so the, the last step that I could do now, if I wanted to, is I can go to my, um, I, I don't have a great way to show my, my cell phone screen at the same time, but um, you could use, you could use MetaMask for this. Um, you could use Alpha Wallet. Um, you know, I may, I may just use, I may just use MetaMask uh, real quick, just so we can see it actually show up somewhere. Hold on just a second while I pull that up. Um, it looks cooler in Alpha Wallet because you can actually, if if your IPFS uploads go through like mine did not, um, you can see the artwork show up there and it. it's pretty cool. Give me just a second here. I will. Good implication is uh, beyond. I have a couple of MetaMask accounts set up, so I'm going to make sure I get into the right one here. Hang on just a second. Okay, cool. Um, let me open this and reshare my screen. All right, so I've got my MetaMask wallet here. Um, I've got some stuff in here already. I have a little bit of Matic, um, some tokens from a previous demo. Cool. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the the address here for my MetaMask account now. And this could be, if it's your Alpha Wallet account, you could copy it from your phone. I just don't have a great way to screen share my phone and um, yeah, and this at the same time. I, I know there's ways to do that. I just, I didn't take the time to set that up ahead of time, sorry. Um, all right, so we scroll down here now. Now we're gonna transfer the token. So we've, we've minted it, but we just minted it to ourselves. So this is an example of like, um, as a as someone who's, you know, defining or creating or publishing a, an, an NFT collection, you can you can mint stuff ahead of time if you want to. Um, you don't have to. You could you could do what's called like a lazy mint, or you know, not actually mint it until someone buys it if you want, so you don't have to pay for the the transaction fee. Um, or you know, if you needed to for whatever application you're building, you need to have just like a pool of NFTs that are already there that someone can then transfer. Um, you could you could mint all these to yourself and then have them available to transfer. So that's that's what we're going to do in this example. Now we're going to go to the tokens slash transfers endpoint, and we're going to hit try it out. And uh, we don't need all of the fields here, so I'm just going to paste this. We need the sender address and the recipient address. So sender is going to be my Firefly address, okay? The recipient is my MetaMask address. I'm going to put that in here now. 
And then, then we need to specify the token index. So when we, we minted the first token, it was just one. Uh, so if we go to the Firefly Explorer, we can see there's one. And the token index was, um, I, wonder if that's a, I wonder if that should say one. We'll find out here. I, I may have a typo in the guide or we may have an issue in the, the UI there. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember if the open Zeppelin auto index function starts at one or if it starts at zero. I think it starts at one because uh, I think zero is sort of not set. Uh, but we'll find out here because if one doesn't exist, this transfer will not work. Ah, invalid token ID. Okay, so it's a typo in the. That's a typo in the guide. I, my apologies. This should say zero right here. Which that that's good. That's. A typo in the guide is a lot easier to fix than a bug in, in the Explorer. But okay, so we transferred token index zero. And if I go look at my Firefly Explorer now, uh, I should see in just a second, it probably hasn't been confirmed yet. Yep, there it is. Now, this other address has a balance of one, and my Firefly address has a balance of zero. So we've transferred that token uh, from my Firefly address, which is BB0. Here we can see that's that's where it originally went to in the mint to. Uh, C41, or, and if we go look at MetaMask, I'm I'm C41. Um, MetaMask may need me to tell. So Alpha Wallet will also just automatically find the token and it shows up there. You don't have to put the token address in, I'm pretty sure, which is great. Um, I think MetaMask on the desktop does not do that. So if we want MetaMask to know about that, uh, what we need to do is, sorry, this Zoom screen's in the way here. Um, we need to get our contract address, copy it and tell MetaMask that we want to import it. Um, so it automatically figured out the symbol from the contract. It went and looked up that contract on the chain, which is great. Uh, it needs a, a token decimal. Just put one. It's fine. Um, sorry. Put. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. I think. I think we need to put. I don't know what we need to put here. MetaMask is not the greatest. No. Nope. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's the, the balance is is going to show up weird here. I guess. Is it eighteen? I love MetaMask. This is this is wonderful. I did not practice this part of the demo. I should have done that. Maybe it's, I think it just needs zero. There we go, zero. Okay, sorry. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Of. Import it and look, there's my, it says I have one of them now. <laughs> Apologies for the, the uh, confusion there. But so there's my token um, from here. I could actually, I so I have this in my um, in my wallet. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually send it back to Firefly now. We copy Firefly's address and but not let me do a transaction on this. All right. Well, MetaMask is just not helping me out here. Um, I have no idea why it won't let me transfer it. Says I have one. But it's not going to let me transfer it. Okay. So, anyway, that brings us to the end of the guide. Pop up in the chat again here and see if we've got, I'm sure there's probably some more questions here. Yeah. Thank you for all of you who are telling me it, sh it should be zero. Um, All right, so we have um, we, we have another hour scheduled. Uh, we don't need to go that long. Uh, we've, we've got to the end of the guide. I wanted to kind of go through it nice and slow so people could follow along and uh, keep it interactive. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, thank you all so much for, for coming and uh, just so many people for, for staying this long. Uh, this was a, a good long workshop where we really got hands-on. I'm happy to stay on for as long as people want to uh, for the next hour. If you have questions or want to still work through, if you're still trying to 
to figure out parts of the workshop. But um, that brings us to the end of our planned programming. So thank you so much. Yeah, so there's a question about other chains. Absolutely. Um, if a if a blockchain is EVM compatible, it will work today. Uh, if it is, if it uses some other, if it's some other type of blockchain that's not EVM compatible, um, there Firefly is extensible. So you could in theory create a new blockchain connector for a different type of chain entirely and do all of these same things. Uh, there was a question about access to the recording. Um, that's a great question for either Sean or David, but I believe this the recording of this will be on the Hyperledger YouTube channel. Uh, should be there. Yeah, I'll drop the link right now. <clears throat> the live stream link is here, but that will turn into the recording link as soon as this is over. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, Just scrolling back through chat here to see if there's any other things I can hit. Um, somebody DM'd me about an error that they're getting. Okay, so the um, to the person who who DM'd me about the the transfer is um, so the transfer is from the incorrect owner. So it's possible you flipped the to in the from address there. Uh, it's also possible the from address isn't actually the right one, uh, or perhaps you may not have actually minted uh, that token. So a couple of things to check on there. Uh, great question on uh, ZK Tech. Yes, uh, that that's an area that we are actively exploring um no like immediate plans that i can share about that right now but um zero knowledge is, is always it's it's super interesting and i think is a an area that's going to be of a particular interest in the future um but so it's definitely something we're looking at Uh, advice for on-chain data analytics using graph databases. Um, that's a, it's a great question. Um, I'm not an expert on that. Um, I think that is, it's, you know, on-chain analytics is certainly an interesting area. Um, you could certainly build something that can, can create an on-chain analytics uh, user experience with Firefly. Firefly is a thing that you could build that with, um, but it, it's not necessarily meant to be an analytics engine itself. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are also other great open source projects out there that, that specialize in that particular thing as well. Uh, it's just an area that I'm not uh, a particular expert in. Well, uh, I'm gonna check Discord here. Uh... Oh, there's a question about showing uh, MetaMask browser wallet to show the NFT. Um, yeah, so basically MetaMask browser, uh, the browser wallet is really bare bones in the features that it has. This is why I, I recommend use Alpha Wallet. Um, that's, it's it's a, a lot better user experience, but basically I just went here. It says, don't see your tokens, import your tokens right here. And then I, I put the token contract address in here. I can get that from Polygon Scan or from Firefly itself, and uh, put that in there. Token decimal should be zero, as we as we decided. For a, an ERC twenty token or a fungible token, sometimes uh, you'll have a, a number of decimal places that you have to specify here for it to show up in the UI. Right. That that's where I got that. That's how I got MetaMask to show that there. Uh, any smart contract templates by business domain? Um, Yes, I'm sure there are some out there. Uh, we have found, I think typically uh, many business many business cases can uh, can actually just leverage uh, basically what we use today, a uh, 
a token contract. Um, so Firefly comes with with an ERC twenty token contract and ERC seven twenty one token contract that allow you to associate data with a transfer, uh, which is a really useful function. So in Firefly, we didn't get into this today, but in Firefly, you can send a message in a multi-party network and associate that with a transfer. Um, we found that that pattern is, uh, is is really powerful and can conserve many different business domains, whether it's a track and trace application, a um, you, all, all, all kinds of different things. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of times, there's there's a lot that can be done with with fairly basic smart contracts and uh, the the power that Firefly gives you to link data that's off chain with data on chain. Um, what if you want to use your own IPFS node? Where should I set up the private IPFS address? Um, so I'm trying to exactly understand what that question is getting at. So so yes, we we actually are using our own IPFS node right now. It's just running in Docker. If I guess if you're saying um, you already have one running, where where do you configure that? Um, that goes into the the Firefly core config file. And uh, it's just the you need to give it the the IP and port number for the IPFS API and gateway. Um, and that, that goes in the Firefly core config file, I think is what you're asking there. Uh, in terms of identity, a workshop. Yes, there we, we should definitely do a workshop about identity in Firefly. That's a, a whole, that's a, that's a great topic. It's a big topic and uh, there's, there's lots of stuff to explore there. So I think that's a fantastic idea for a future workshop. Um, let's see, there was a question. It's minted several images on the same token. How does this differ from the minting we did today? Um, I'm not sure I understand what that means. If you've minted several tokens that all point to the same image, or if you've minted um, one token that points to multiple images. And if, if it's the latter, I'm not sure how you did that. Um, I guess how it compares to what we did today, we we uploaded one image and we pointed one token to that. You could, if you wanted to, um, so like a lot of NFT collections will have, uh, you may have, like, like we minted a, a one of one today. So there's only one, on this smart contract, there's only one animated Firefly pixel art. Um, you could say, well, these these ones are rare, so there's only five of them. And you could point five different NFTs to the same metadata JSON, or you could say they're common. There's you know twenty thousand of them, and you could mint twenty thousand tokens and and point them all at the same thing. Uh, it's it's really up to you and how you want to define your tokens and how you want to define your collection. Um, someone said they got the NFT to their MetaMask wallet. Is there an easy way to transfer it to the Alpha wallet? Um, it probably. Um, I, I, I'm not sure why the button to transfer it in MetaMask didn't light up. Honestly, I think MetaMask is not, the browser MetaMask is just not the greatest. Um, it doesn't have very many features. There is probably, you could probably, if you really needed to, um, you can export your private key from MetaMask and put it in Alpha Wallet, and then it would show up there. That's uh, that's another option. Um, or you could use a different wallet app. As long as you load that private key into a different wallet app, you can transfer it wherever you want. Uh, it's a question about hybrid cloud hosting. Uh, or architecture from Kaleido. Um, yeah, again, would love to talk more about Kaleido and all of its offerings. Um, it's just not the not the main focus today. It's, um, but yeah, lots lots of different really cool options there, and uh, would love to talk about that in the future. All right, we still got 48 people in here. So um, I'm happy to, happy to leave the call open if people want to keep working through the, the workshop if people are still working on it. Um, happy to hang out if 
people have questions still or want to dialogue. Let's see, a question about integrating capabilities to connect the NFT to enterprise systems. Um, the question is, what does that mean? And that I, that, I guess that would be my question as well. <laughs> um, there, I guess one thought on that is, uh, you know, we, we commonly, most people when they hear nft they think oh it's a it's a gif or it's a it's a a bored ape or it's a some goofy pixel art of a cat or something something along those lines and really uh what what an nft actually is like you saw today is just a unique identifier on a blockchain that has ownership that has provenance and it has traceability so so it has a history of the ownership and it points to some piece of data that may live off the blockchain somewhere. And when you think about it from that aspect, um, there are lots of really good business cases that you can use for that. Um, and so, you know, one of the other challenges is uh, in the public space. Every time you transfer that NFT or or perform a transaction with it, it costs that blockchain's native currency. In this case, it would cost Matic. Uh, in a private chain, uh, you could have a, a gas-free system where, or where the, the price of gas is free. And so that means you can, you can make as many NFTs as you need to for your business application on a private chain. Um, you could transfer those freely between members of an organization uh, you even using Firefly, you could potentially bridge those NFTs to a public chain in certain cases when that was necessary. So there's a lot of different enterprise applications to uh, the things that we've shown here today. But um, you know, most people initially think of an, an NFT as just an image. Well, it's it's actually, I, I would say the the common use cases for NFTs that we've seen on the internet today are just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what is possible with the technology itself. Um, so there's there's plenty of things that are, I think, of, of more useful business value that can be done with an NFT. Um, some other questions here um, about encrypting or decrypting attachments posts uh, to IPFS. Um, potentially, yes, I'm sure there. I know there are some projects out there that have uh, have done things with that. It's not in the scope of what Firefly does today, uh, but it's it's very possible that you could plug another tool into that and use it uh, for something that is more important than a, than a silly picture. Um, it's it's also probably worth thinking through, like, is um, you know, is is the data too sensitive that it shouldn't even be shared, um, even in an encrypted form, publicly like that. Or within a multi-party network, uh, if it's too sensitive to be shared with all of the members of the multi-party network, uh, perhaps sending it directly peer-to-peer -peer might be better. While still using blockchain as the, the distributed ledger and proof of that transaction that happened uh, while keeping the payload itself completely private. Uh, someone asked about if S3 is suitable for this. Uh, Sure. Yeah, you could write. So there, there's one. So like I said, Firefly is very pluggable. Uh, it's very modular architecture. You could. Um, so there's there's one plugin today for shared storage. But you know, if you if you read through the code in Firefly, you don't see a lot about IPFS. It's really we we call it a a, a shared storage system. And uh, there's one implementation of that plugin today, and it happens to be IPFS. But you could most definitely create a another shared storage plugin that leverages S3 or some other sort of uh, distributed file share system and, and use that as well. All right, any other questions?
thanks. Appreciate it. Um, okay, any, any plans for the hybrid cloud? Yeah, so I mean, Kaleido definitely has very flexible hosting options. Um, if it's something you're, you're interested in learning more about, I definitely encourage you to reach out to uh, the, the sales team and uh, they're more than happy to talk through uh, the different options that are, are potentially available there. Uh, there was a question about how to point to S3 buckets for the image URIs. Yeah, so so this is also something I've seen in some NFTs where the metadata JSON goes on IPFS, but it instead of that IPFS resource pointing to another IPFS resource, uh, the metadata points to S3, and you could most definitely do that. Um, I chose not to do that because I wanted both the image and the metadata to be immutable and distributed, so I, I chose IPFS for both of them. Uh, there's a question about in, in Discord about RPC endpoints. Um, yeah, so chain list lists nodes that are uh, it, it's status list nodes that are up and available. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they support all of the functions that the uh, that Firefly and the EVM blockchain connector need to function. Uh, if you look at the EVM connect readme lists the the different json rpc functions that it needs to to actually run um not all free public nodes support all these functions uh, this is why we ran one today uh that that i know 100 supports all these functions because we're running it um uh, but if you just do a search for for free public rpc nodes um, it, it may be up and it may support some of these. Um, it may support all of them. That's great. You're welcome to use it. But um, it's sort of, you just have to have to test it and see if it, it actually works. Because not all of them expose all of these functions because some of them can be uh, more resource intensive than others. So uh, that's just something to watch out for there. I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing my screen still. Uh, let, me, let me drop the link to that readme in here. Um, All right, um, give it another minute or two, but if, if folks don't have any more questions, then we can uh, we can close this down here in just a minute, I think. Happy to keep chatting on Discord. Um, again, I'll, I'll drop the link to um, let's go, go, go grab the, the link to the Discord there. If you, if you want to keep chatting, um, happy to would love to connect with you there. All right, someone finally caught up. Yay. Great job. Um, let's see. There was a question in chat about how we can store on, on S3 and maintain immutability. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I didn't use S3. Uh, there may be ways to do it, but that probably um, needs some really deep architectural investigation into how S3 works itself. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible. Um, Definitely something to explore, though. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for attending. Um, there's a question about Quorum. Yeah, uh, Firefly works with Quorum as well. Thanks everyone for attending. I think we're gonna go ahead. The, the questions are slowing down here. Um, if you have more questions in the future, would love to, to connect with you in the Firefly Discord. Um, if hopefully this workshop was was useful and informative, the, the guide will stay up there. Um, you're welcome to, to plug in whatever RPC node you want to after today. Uh, I'll, I'll update the guide to have a note about that. 
But uh, I just really appreciate all the time that everyone uh, put into today's workshop and uh, for taking the, the couple hours here to, to sit with me and, and use Firefly and get hands on. Um, just, yeah, thanks for, for joining and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Nico. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, David. Thanks for facilitating and, and organizing everything. Really appreciate all your help. Yeah, of course. Happy to help. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Hope you uh, got a lot of use out of that. David, do you need me to do anything on my end to shut things down? Or no, you got I'll, I'll close it in just a second. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye, all.